today we're going to take this and turn it into this one of the really cool things about keeping bees is that honey is not really the only product of the hive you can get honey you can get wax that we're going to do today you can get pollen you can get propolis out of them there's lots of really cool things that come from bees and today we're going to focus right directly on rendering the wax that comes out of the hives so this is the wax from our wax cappings and in order to make a candle like this you've got to do something with it it's not at all usable in this state right here and in order to do that you've got to have a few things you need something to filter it through this is just screen wire it's actually plastic screen we'll have to figure out if it'll hold up the boiling water or not you're going to need a pantyhose you're you're gonna need a large pot and you're gonna need something that you can make a double boiler out of as well you're also gonna need a fish cooker because unless you're just really really brave this is not a good idea to do inside of your house in the kitchen it can make a really big mess and wax is notoriously really difficult to get off of anything the first thing we want to do is load up our big giant pot here with the wax I've got a couple I've got wax wax from a couple of different sources here I've got some burr comb this is burr comb it's basically just the wax that the bees tend to build in between the frames or they build it between the top bars of the frames and the top of the hive or the bottom bars of the box before uh, uh, on top of it rather so that's some really that's a really good source of, uh, of wax there I've also got quite a bit of wax cappings these wax cappings are really always my main source of wax uh, of course there's quite a bit of honey in here as well It's sticking to the bottom because all the honey is in the bottom. Oh, there it went. I've also got some random wax here that I've just kind of saved over the years. Here's a ball of what was probably burr comb. Here's some stuff that I rendered a long time ago that's just been laying around. And I just kind of want to get it integrated back into a big wax cake. Get it cleaned out again. And make something a little bit better out of it. Just a few more pieces of burr comb as well. You really your best bet when you're tending your hives, and I don't do this like I should, but your best bet when you're tending your hives is to keep some kind of a little bucket like this and just put your burr comb in this bucket as you go through your hives and clean out your hives because that's a really good source of wax as well. At this point, we want to take a hose and fill this up to a little bit above the level of the wax. So we're going to have to bring this to boiling and let it boil for five or ten minutes maybe even more but while we're waiting on that we can get our next step ready all right so it's starting to boil here so we'll just give it a little stir with a paint stirrer i'm going to turn down the heat some too because i really don't want it to boil over basically you're just trying to make a big nasty slurry of wax and water of course that's not the only stuff in here you've got all kinds of hive trash there may be some cocoons in here if the bees have been using those frames for for um, uh, brood rearing there's just all kinds of junk in here that's just got to get out one thing to remember if you decide to do this is you need to have plenty of room in your pot I had too much in there and I had to dip some out because it was boiling over So of course the whole point here is to filter out all the bad stuff so we need something to filter it into so i've got about a five gallon metal bowl here and we're going to put some screen wire on top and this is actually plastic and i checked and i'm thinking it'll probably survive just for long enough so that we can get a couple of um, filter filtrations through it Thank you. 
If you got some metal screen wire laying around, I would definitely recommend that, but I think this will do just for what we need to do. So this has been boiling now for about 10 minutes or so. I really didn't time it, but what you really just need to make sure of is that it boils for a little while and all your wax gets melted and it just kind of incorporates into one big nasty hot slurry. So let's go ahead and take this out and we'll filter it through the screen and then we'll dump our what I had to dip out back into here and boil it for a couple minutes and add it to it as well. And by the way, you'd probably be wise to wear some gloves or something because this is hot wax and it'll be super hot and it'll stick to you as well. So just be really careful doing this. So you want to try to drain as much out of this as you can because this is your wax right here and this is not something that you want to waste. So at this point, all that we can really do is wait. Unfortunately, the lighting getting all that great in here, but if you can see it, of course you can see the reflection of the top of the shed in this, of course, but there's a layer of wax on the top before the silt and all the trash really starts. So basically what's going on here is the wax floats to the top, water's denser than the wax, so it goes to the bottom and there's honey down there as well. So there's basically three layers of junk going on in here. So what we're gonna do now is just set a time lapse and watch this cool off. All right, so this has been cooling off here for about three hours or so, and for future reference, you might want to not do this if you've got a bucket of honey being cleaned up by the bees, because you see we've got quite a few visitors, and unfortunately, some of them got into the wax, and they obviously didn't really make it. So what we need to do now is get this wax cake off of here, and it looks like the water has cooled down pretty much to where I can touch it without the fear of getting burned. So I should be able to pry this out of here with minimal difficulty. Let's try it. Oh yeah. So you can see that wasn't quite cooled off. We've got a good bit of wax right in here that we need to go ahead and get out as well. We need to do something with this liquid as well because if I don't do something with this liquid, it's really gonna kill a lot of bees. So you can see there's a pretty big benefit of trying to do this operation inside where there aren't any bees. But this is what we ended up with with our very first filtration. You see we've still got quite a bit of junk on the bottom. Not a big deal because the pantyhose is gonna filter that stuff out for us. What we need to do now is take this wax cake right here, break it up and put it into our pot and make a double boiler. Looking like a pretty good yield from all of that all of that stuff that we put in. That is a good bit of wax. That's a good three quarters of an inch thick right there. We'll get the bees out of here. Now for this again, you want to set up some kind of a double boiler and it really doesn't have to be fancy. 
at all. I'm just using two pots that kind of happen to fit on, fit on each other. But you don't want to use direct heat for this. Alright guys, so at this point the wax is melted and we're ready to go ahead and pour it up. I'm going to pour it into this bucket first to filter all the very fine particulates out and get it good and clean. And unfortunately the pantyhose that I bought won't fit around the top of this bucket. So what I did is I found this metal pipe, put the pantyhose on the top of it, and I'm just going to pour it straight down into this pipe and it should filter out through here without too much trouble. Um, down here are my molds. I've got some of my wife's baking pans lined with parchment paper, so I promise you there's quite a bit at stake right now and what I'm gonna do is pour my wax into these molds and just let it sit here and cool off and at that point I should be able to lift the wax cakes right out of these molds no problem so and this is here for just to just to hold this parchment paper down so it doesn't curl up so let's go ahead and see what we can do about pouring this into this filter and uh, making some wax cakes There's a little water in the bottom of this one, so I'm trying to dribble it out. Actually, I think what'll happen is that water will go to the bottom and I'll just be able to separate it without too much trouble. Alright guys, so let's check out what we ended up with. So this one right here was the one that kind of had the water and the junk on the bottom and I just left it out and the bees cleaned it up for me. There's a few specks in there, but really not that big of a deal. But that's a nice cake. That's a really nice cake of wax right there. Let's get this one out and see what it's looking like. Yeah, that is just beautiful. I wish that y'all were here to smell this and see the color on this. It's just a deep, deep yellow color. Just beautiful, beautiful stuff here. Let's, let's get one more here. There we go. I moved out into the sunlight so y'all could really kind of get an appreciation for the color of this stuff. And it is just beautiful. That's the dirty one right there. There you go. So here's our candle mold here, and we won't make this entire cylinder. This is a really, really large cylinder. So we'll make about half of this, kind of about the size that you saw earlier. And this is a pretty crude way to do all of this. My wife has actually got a proper setup in the house but I'm just kind of doing this all outside. So I'm just kind of making do with what I've got. So if I can get some of these wax cakes in this jar, we'll see if we can get some wax melted.
So guys, that's pretty well gonna do it for this video. We successfully took all of this really nasty looking junk that you see right here, and we made this pretty nice looking candle out of it. You can see there's just a little bit of trash on the bottom here and a little divot in, in the top here, and that's where a bee flew into it while the wax was still, uh, was still wet and I had to dig her out. And this is what we have left over as far as wax goes. We still have these three cakes left over and uh, I think that's a pretty good haul. This is actually about two years worth of beeswax out of my five hives, and I only get the wax for the most part out of the wax cappings off of the honey frames, and as you can tell, there's just not a ton of wax in there. So this represents about two years worth of scraping the wax cappings off of those frames. Something pretty interesting here that I wanted to show y'all, and y'all have probably already noticed it, but this is a candle that was made out of 100% beeswax, and this is a candle that was made out of 100% beeswax. The difference here is the wax from this candle came from the Blue Ridge Honey Company, which is, I don't, I'm not sure, I'm guessing 150 miles from here, I'm not 100% sure on that. It's a good distance from us, and this came, of course, from my backyard right here, and the difference is the plants that they gather the honey from, they take the honey and they eat the honey and they transform it into wax. And of course, it always depends on what kind of plants they're getting the honey from, what the honey looks like. Therefore, it always depends on what kind of honey they have to eat, what the wax looks like. They even smell just a little bit different. This one right here has a very, very sweet aroma to it. And this one right here has very sweet aroma to it as well, but it's a little bit deeper. Um, I don't know, there's a very faint difference, but there is a difference, which is really interesting to me as far as the plants and the trees and so forth that they're gathering nectar out of. And this is the result, different color waxes. This right here is really the, the color that I think about when I think about pure beeswax, not so much this darker color, but these are nice too. So anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. I thought I'd share that with y'all. But that's gonna do it for this video. Thank y'all for watching and I will see y'all on the next one.